it's great to be back. This time I'm going to reveal hidden Italy. Italy as the locals know it. This is the ultimate secret place to be for the locals. I'm going off the beaten track. Come with me. To let you in on the best kept secrets of my precious homeland. From old traditions being kept alive. Just incredible. Incredible. Spectacular scenery. And most importantly, Salute. Salute. The food heritage that made me and shapes my home country. This is what Italian people like to eat. I'll share my tips for making mouth-watering authentic Italian food at home. This is a lot of work for some inside information. So come with me, Gino da Campo, as I give you the insider's guide to hidden Italy. This year, I have chosen seven regions that, for me, have some of the best kept calorie and cultural secrets that Italy has to offer. My journey of discovery will take us from the north in Trentino, Alto Adige and Lombardia, down through Umbria and Tuscany, and then up to Liguria and Piemonte. But first, I'm starting right in the center. Tonight, I'm deep in hidden Italy, on the Adriatic coast in the region of Abruzzo. This little known region sits in the middle of Italy, bordered by Lazio, Marche, Umbria and the Adriatic Sea. It's a world away from modern Italy. One third of it is home to three national parks make it one of the most rural of the Italian states. It's so far off the beaten track, it only opened an airport at the turn of the century. Fishing and farming are this region's lifeblood, so that's what I'll be experiencing firsthand. As we Italians are proud of our pasta, I'm curious to find out first about a special type this region created. So I'm starting my journey in the coastal town of Pescara. And the very place to find out about the chitarra pasta is this artisan shop. Keeping alive this 200 years old tradition is Giovanni Minucci, who opened this shop in 1965. He now runs it with his son Claudio. Amazing. Incredible. The chitarra shape is, think about a spaghetti, but square edges. Si. Giovanni has continued to use this handmade method for the past 50 years. See, si, look at that. That's like uh, watching a, an, an artist paint. Amazing. I can't believe it that in 2016, they're still doing this kind of thing by hand. Oh, and uh, watching uh, this is just incredible. Incredible. The chitarra is named after the guitar-like instrument they used to shape the pasta. So this is stainless steel, stainless steel wire that is only one wire and it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. As Italy has over hundreds of shapes of pasta, then why did the Abruzzans feel the need to invent one more? He was saying that the farmers around here, they wanted to create a shape that is associated to them. So everybody we know that the guitarra comes from the farmers in Abruzzo, and that's how it happened. Time for me to learn the art of making this region's iconic pasta. Allora, incomincia, allora, incomincia a muoverti così, in questo modo, di spalla, vai, vai. Spingi piano piano. Claudio tells me the secret is to push the pin and let it roll itself. Va benissimo. Spingi un po' di più, vai. I say, so the first time you need to be gentle, just to stretch the, uh, the pasta sheet, and the second time you need to be firmer, so then you cut it through. Bravo, Gino. Okay. Adesso Ta -da! suona, suona. <laughs> the reason why it's called a guitar, because then you need to do like that, uh, and all the pasta falls down. It's the Jimi Hendrix of Abruzzo. 
Gino Hendrix. Gino Hendrix. Ma me la vado assaggiare. Claudius offered to cook the pasta to prove that the shape really does make a difference. Se no dopo ti cresce la pancia. <laughs> Grazie. Prego. Chicky monkey, he said not too much pasta, the your belly is going to get big. Unbelievable. Three minutes later. Buon appetito. Bella dente, bella... Tutta sema. Wow. You can really feel the square pieces of pasta in your mouth. And you get the egg, you got the semola. Mm. I love the fact that it's simple, you know, the simplicity, the way they serve with a bit of tomato sauce and a bit of a grated Parmesan cheese. But the thing that I feel the most in my mouth, and I don't want to be sentimental or romantic or anything like that, I really feel the passion that these people have for what they're doing. And um, I really wish that I could be part of this family, of this tradition, uh, somehow, because it's just incredible. Grazie. Grazie a te, Gino. Grazie, veramente grazie. siete grazie. stati fantastici. Sei contenta? Fan um, you know, wonderful, mm. bellissimo. And the locals certainly agree. So, keen to find more hidden gems, have heard about the Bert family. They are preserving another traditional Abruzzan way of life on the most historical stretch of coastline of the region. This is the Trabocchi Coast, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. These century-old contraptions were used so fishermen could avoid getting into the tumultuous Adriatic waters. 25-year-old Tommaso Bird was more than happy to explain his family's long history with these unique platforms. Tommaso here. His great-grandfather built the Trabocco in 1898. Then your grandfather in... 1925. 22. 1922. Your father. 57. 1957. And then it's Tommaso here, which is run the uh, nowadays. 1991. Wow, that is that is four generations of fishermen. Bravi. Grazie. Tommaso, spiegami un po' il metodo, il sistema che usi in questa pesca così uh, diversa. Tommaso explained that he and his father drop the net every morning at 5 a.m. But what makes it different is that they check them every 20 minutes. And this type of fishing is called scaling. The waters here have been rich with anchovies, sardines, sea bass and sea bream. But sometimes there are a lot of underwater winds where it pushes the net upwards instead of being down and they don't get any fish whatsoever. This ancient technique can't compete with the modern ones, so the entrepreneurial family diversified their business. They chose to modernize the Trabocchi, turning them into restaurants and capitalizing on this stunning location, guaranteeing its future for generations to come. See, this is one of the reasons why I actually came here, because what I love about Tomas is the fact that a young boy, but still has the passion and the energy to keep all this beautiful heritage, this antique way of fishing alive. And that's the reason why I'm here. Now, let's see how unlucky I am with fishing. La tiriamo su? Come on, let's pull this up, bye. This wooden pole or winch is attached to a system of weights and pulleys, which lift the nets. This is easy, look, I can do backwards if I want to. Oh, I, I don't have to at all. I love cooking with fish, but fishing is a different matter. So it should come as no surprise then. Nothing. Nothing. Not even one little tiny little fish. Nothing. Never mind, my man. Never mind. Fish may not be on the menu tonight, but at least I got my handmade chitarra pasta to cook with. I'm in a mood to cook proper Italian food. And when I say proper Italian food, I don't mean spaghetti bolognese and all that stuff that Italians don't really eat. Uh, I'm talking about, number one, my star ingredients, that is chitarra pasta. If you can get chitarra, linguine will work just as well. I'm going to cook this pasta with extra virgin olive oil, garlic, cherry tomatoes, a little bit of chili and rocket leaves. 
simplicity at its best and this is what Italian people like to eat. So that is my secret for you today. And my next tip is, I don't have any heat underneath the pan. My grandfather always said to me, whenever you cook with garlic and you want the best flavor out of the garlic, you need to make sure that the pan is cold, you slice your garlic, you put it there, then you put the extra virgin and then you switch it on. So slowly, slowly, the heat to the extra virgin marries into the garlic and you get the best flavor. Trust me, my grandfather's tips have never let me down. So thinly slice two garlic cloves. Pour in the extra virgin olive oil. And then just two or three pinches of dry chili flakes. Now the only thing we have to do, put the heat underneath. While the pan heats up, you prepare your cherry tomatoes by simply slicing in half. When the garlic begins to color, add the tomatoes and give it a good stir. Now you want to cook the tomato no longer than three to four minutes. So I got pot with boiling hot water. In there, we're gonna have to put the salt straight away before we cook the pasta. And then of course, my chitarra pasta. Like all good Italian pasta, it should be cooked al dente, which will take five to six minutes. One more ingredient I'm going to use is white wine. This is a local wine called Pecorino. Really, really good for this recipe. And I'm just gonna put probably about half a glass of wine in there, no more than that. The alcohol is evaporating, but the flavor of the wine stays in there. My last and final ingredient in the sauce I got rocket leaves. Look at that. Fresh rocket leaves, and I'm going to cook them like you would cook spinach. The peppery rocket contrasts perfectly with the sweetness of the tomatoes. Season and remember my rule. Always add the pasta to the sauce. Now, if you look at the pasta and the sauce together there, the pasta is nice and al dente. The last 20 seconds, what's going to happen? The pasta is going to start to absorb the flavor of the sauce. So immediately, as soon as you're going to twist it and put it into your mouth, bang, 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 all those flavors, boom, explode. Job done. So pick it up. Straight onto the plates. And look at that, all those beautiful tomato, the rocket leaves. when people they say to me, Gino, what is your favorite plate of pasta? This is Italian food at its best. What I like about Abruzzo is how much the locals, they care about their tradition and the passion that they have for their family, for the region, the passion that they go for the food is second to none. I absolutely love it, love it, love it. So I can't wait to find out what other secrets this region has to offer me. I am exploring Italy as the locals know it, seeking out its hidden gems. I'm traveling the heart of Abruzzo. As I'm being told, the scenery here is something I've never seen before. It's gonna be great. A 90-minute drive takes me deep into the rural heartland of this ancient state to the Sirente Velino National Park. And on the way, the landscape is a feast for my eyes. Jutting out the lunar-scaped mountains are majestic castles hewn out of the rock. This particular castle, Rocca Calascio, was originally built as a watchtower in the 10th century and is the highest fort in all of Italy, perched nearly 1,500 meters above sea level. <laughs> Descending down, I find myself in the rugged heart of the region, where I meet Mauro di Fonza, who has farmed this terrain for 15 years, and the wild landscape has some very unique challenges. I, I, I said, you know, here is in paradise. I mean, what, what can you go wrong around here? It's all nice and peaceful. And he just said, well, yes, it's nice and peaceful if you don't have bears and uh, a wolf is trying to eat the uh, sheep. I wasn't expecting that. He said, but don't fear because he's got the proper dogs 
that if the uh, wolves of the uh, bears are coming, ah, they're going to attack the, uh, the bears and the wolves and everything is going to be all right. These incredible dogs defend the sheep from wild brown bears. They are trained to protect by bonding with their charges right from when they are pups. I did ask what kind of dog is a dog that uh, can actually attack a bear and a wolf. And he said it's called Maremano Abruzzese. Abruzzese. It's called Maremano Abruzzese. So if you're at home and have a problem with bears and wolves, that's the dog that you need to get. Maremano Abruzzese. A typical flock can be as large as 200. As they roam freely, 10 dogs keep them safe. Ho detto di andare sopra e girare le pecore, spostarle dall'altra parte. Con i fischi. Con i fischi. So he's telling the sheep with a little whistle to turn left and go towards the uh, mountain. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Watch this. <laughs> they like my children, they don't listen at all. Okay, I've tried the carrot. Maybe it's time to reach for the steak. Oh, this is harder than I thought. I think I, think I need a break. Gino, vieni con me. You gonna run a break? I wasn't expecting this kind of romantic setting under a tree and apparently he's got something that he wants me to try. E per vedere se un se un vero abruzzese lo devi saper cucinare. Okay. He said there is a, a local speciality from Abruzzo and he's challenging me. He said if you can cook this, that means you are real abruzzese, which is a man who comes from Abruzzo. Ma che è? L'arrosticino, l'arrosticino abruzzese. Arrosticino abruzzese. Mauro tells me that the arrosticini is a typical shepherd snack made from bite-sized mm. chunks of mutton. <laughs> I'm going to show him that I can be an Abruzzese man if I want to. I'm not one to shy away. This has inspired me to make lamb skewers with a green bean and goat's cheese salad. Now I'm going to start right here with a fillet of lamb. I'm using fillet because it's nice and tender. I've cut the lamb fillet probably about the size of an ice cube. In there, straight away, we're going to add runny honey. And very important because it's going to give a nice sweetness to the meats. Add three or four teaspoons of honey, sprinkle a tablespoon of fennel seeds, a pinch of black pepper, then chop up a bunch of fresh mint leaves. I want to use them fresh because I want the best flavors for my skewers. Add a squeeze of lemon juice, and finally, a good splash of extra virgin olive oil. Now, at this point, I don't know if you realize, I haven't used any salt whatsoever. I got a theory with salt and meat. If I'm gonna put salt in here now on the meat and then put them on the barbecue, I'm always afraid that the salt is gonna drain all the moisture away from the meat and it's gonna make the meat very tough. I always season the meat with salt once the meat is cooked. Now, I could leave this to rest for 12 hours, 13 hours. It doesn't really matter. Remember, the longer you keep in marinating and the more flavors you're gonna get. The important thing though, if you keep to marinating for 24 hours, make sure that you keep the meat in the fridge. With my meats, I'm going to serve peppers and my tip with peppers never use the green one because the green one they're very bitter i always use the yellow one or the red one so you want to cut the peppers more or less the same side of the meat i like to use metal skewers when i do my skewers because they're very easy if you want to use the wooden one fine but then you have to soak them in water otherwise they burn metal one i think they're more kind of a brutal man macho man I always put two cubes of lamb, followed by a piece of pepper, until the skewer is full. There is only one way to know when a barbecue is ready, and this is what my grandfather told me. You shouldn't be able to keep your hand on the barbecue, I mean, do not touch the grill of the barbecue, just, just above the grill, no longer than three seconds. If you can do that longer than three seconds, it means it's not hot enough. One, two, that's it, it's ready, it's ready. There is a sexy sound that I want you to hear. There's nothing better 
than a skewer going on a hot barbecue. Listen to this. I told you it was sexy. Now, I want to cook my skewers for about 12 minutes. And the reason is because I want to do three minutes on each side. So I've got enough time to do my green bean salad. For the side salad, I've boiled the beans for three minutes. I'm adding in extra virgin olive oil, some fresh lemon juice, then half a handful of pine kernels. And the reason why I put the pine kernels is because I like the crunchiness. Salt and pepper goes in there. And my last ingredients in the salad, goat cheese. Use a soft goat cheese, so then when you toss everything together, it's gonna kind of become like cream. I'm going to serve it right here on my chopping board. Ah, that looks good. Now is the time to season these skewers because it's right at the end and straight onto the serving plate. Final squeeze of lemon juice. That's it, I'm happy. And this is how I made my version of arrosticini. Mauro! Time for the taste test. Honesto, eh? Okay. Bye. È buono, è dolce. No. Buonissimo. Mm? Buono, buono. Esatto. That is impossible not to like. Sono buonissimi, eh? ma non è proprio l'arrosticino originale abruzzese. Quindi la cittadinanza onoraria. Ma sai che questa volta <laughs> non ti è concessa. He said they're delicious, but it's not going to give me the uh, honorary of being an Abruzzo man. I don't really care. I'm very proud to be a Neapolitan and I'm very proud of my skewers. And uh, I'm actually very proud to be here <laughs> and uh, uh, to make a new friend. But it's buoni. So buoni. Buoni sono buoni. You should try this. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.